I now look to Dr. Imad ad -Din to close the case for the proposition. <laughs> uh, thank you, and uh, uh, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, peace be upon you. I want to thank uh, uh, the Oxford Union for this invitation and this honor, uh, and uh, I would like to uh, sh uh, uh, clarify, I was introduced as the president of the Islamic American Zakat Foundation, but I'm here as the president of the Minaret of Freedom Institute. Uh, and uh, check that out, minaret.org online. Sorry for the shameful uh, uh, advertisement. Uh, I also want to share with you, though, that I originally asked to be on the opposition side. <laughs> Apparently, there was a shortage on the, uh, uh, on the pr uh, proposition side, and so <laughs> I'm here. But I want to clarify. I did, not, I did not ask that because I thought that that was the side that was in the right, but because it is painful to argue on the proposition side. I, have to, I agree with most of what was said by the opposition as to the phrasing and the articulation and the danger of articulating the issue in this way. However, having said that, the issue before us is the Arab world has failed the Palestinian people. And as my then preteen niece used to say, duh. <laughs> In order, and I could just say that and then I could sit down, but I think that would be uh, uh, a failure to ad address the points that have been raised and uh, uh, mean-spirited towards this uh, prestigious institution. So instead what I will do, I will is examine the issue by saying there are four questions I believe that have to be answered in order to understand how one should vote on this proposition. The first is you have to ask, what is it that the Palestinian people want? And then you have to ask, have they achieved any of these things? And then you have to ask, touching on the issue of the moral uh, question that was raised properly, what did the Arab states promise the Palestinians? And notice I said Arab states, not Arab world. It is not because I think the Arab world has granted the Palestinians what they want. That's clearly not the case. But it is because it is the Arab states that made promises that were not kept. And then finally, to ask the details about why they failed. So the first question is, what is it the Palestinian people want? Now, I am myself a Palestinian. Uh, I was born on the ocean as my mother was coming to the United States in 1948 during the Nakba under uh, Israeli law or Palestinian law or Ottoman law or British law or American law or Muslim law, that made me a, an American citizen because my father was an American citizen. It was an American boat flying the American flag. However, the immigration official who met my parents at Ellis Island simply refused to recognize my citizenship. And so I was born stateless like my people. My father had to go to court in order to get my citizenship. Yes, that was not a failure of the Arab world. That was a failure of the American government. But that's not the question before us. The Palestinian people want their property rights. They want their basic human rights. They want a democratic governance. They want their national rights, and they want the right to live in their homeland. I want to clarify, even I, who is glad and proud to be a citizen of the United States, think that that should be my choice, not because I am refused the possibility of going back to my homeland. For that reason, one of the arguments most often made on this side of the question that the reason the Arab world has failed the Palestinians is because they have not given them citizenship that's a red herring. 
You didn't fail them by not giving them what they didn't ask for in the first place. To say that is like saying the solution to the problem of the Israeli-Palestinian dispute is let the Jews who immigrated to Palestine go back to the countries they came from and give them citizenship there. And their children and their grandchildren and so on. Surely no one in this honorable house would accept that as a reasonable solution. So why should it be the solution for the Palestinian people either? Now, have they achieved any of these things? Well, obviously the answer is no, they have not. So then we have to move on to the question is, well, where's the moral responsibility for the Arab world? It is certainly a failure of the entire world, but that's not the question before us. The Arab world made promises to the Palestinians. It's done it over and over again. In the beginning, it promised a military victory over the, uh, over the invading uh, Israelis. They failed in 1948. They failed spectacularly in 1967. With the establishment of the PLO, they promised to support an armed resistance and, at the same time, a diplomatic struggle. That has not succeeded. The PLO charter called for a single democratic Palestinian state with equal rights for all peaceful and loyal citizens. In 1988, at its 19th session in Algiers, the Palestine National Council accepted the principle of a two-state solution, and in 1996, its charter was amended to formally embrace both an Israeli and Palestinian state. Throughout, with one exception, the Arab states were unable to secure anything for the Palestinians. The one exception was King Hussein's withdrawal from the West Bank in 1988, but that withdrawal has not granted the Palestinians the objectives that I mentioned. Only a place for the PNA to act as Israel's agent in continuing the occupation under which the land continues to be taken away from its owners and given to illegal settlers. And in addition to the examples given before of the uh, P, uh, PA acting as an enforcement authority, I noticed that a lady, a female Palestinian activist who has provided money and assistance for people whose families are in prison, uh, is, ha, was arrested and tortured by the PA. <clears throat> in 2002, the Arab League, at a summit in Beirut, endorsed what is known as the Saudi Initiative, calling for a normalization of relations between the Arab region and Israel in exchange for a full withdrawal by Israel from the occupied territories, including East Jerusalem, and a just settlement of the Palestinian refugee problem based on UN Resolution 194. This went nowhere. In 2007, it was readopted at an Arab League summit unanimously, except for an abstention by Hamas and the absence of Libya. Despite the endorsement of UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the support of the EU, and even initially from the Bush administration, in the support of George Mitchell, US Special Envoy to the Middle East, in March 2009, that President Barack Obama's administration intended to incorporate the initiative into its Middle East policy, it went nowhere. <coughs> Uh, I will end by quoting my niece. Duh. <laughs> <laughs>